Okay, I've done one of these before, but I do so many of them, I thought I'd do another one. Uh, I just got done doing the, so the video previous to this one. These are all the parts that were replaced in it. And that was probably one of the most mint Tram D201As that I've seen. So it was in excellent condition. But, mint condition doesn't mean the parts are still good. So we're not going to worry about the electrolytic caps, because actually the customer had said it, it did have a slight hum. So, yeah, the electrolytic cap has no hum anymore, so electrolytic caps definitely needed to be changed. But, so here's all the parts, can caps, all the resistors, capacitors, you know, all the low voltage electrolytics, and a couple more high voltage ones here. And I guess you could almost call these mid voltage because these these run in 160 to 200 and something volts usually and yeah, are I think all of these are 160s yeah these are all the four four microfarad 160 volts and then this one's like a 250 I think yeah that's a four microfarad 250 but in any case we all know electrolytic caps go bad that just happens by time but the resistors and I've shown this before looks can be deceiving and once again this is no exception so these came out of that really nice looking radio and some of these resistors look like the day they were made pristine condition I mean just look at that not a scratch on it not a bubble burn mark and that means absolutely nothing because this is an old carbon composition resistor very unreliable don't get me wrong, they work fine, they last for a long time, but they're not reliable in the long term. And we're going to prove that again. Looks can be deceiving. I can pretty much guarantee you, without having tested any of these yet, that probably some of the ones that look nice, like these, are probably bad. And some of these that probably look like, yeah, you know what, you know, all bubbly, definitely got hot, the glyptals cooked out of them. There's probably going to be a couple of those that actually test fine. So appearance can be very deceiving when it comes to resistors. Just because it looks baked doesn't mean it is baked. <laughs> so we're going to be looking at this HP meter right here. It's set to auto range. I have it in four wire mode, so that's why there's four wires. We got the Kelvin clips here hooked up to it. So I'm just going to randomly, and I don't know if I should zoom back so you can see I'm not taking them out of some mysterious pile here. Try and get all of this in the picture. Actually push the caps out of the way. We'll push the resistors forward there. So we can see I'm not pulling them out from under the bench trying to pull a fast one on you. So start off with one of these. It doesn't look bad. That looks pretty good. Don't really see any cooked spots on that. So orange, orange, orange. So it's a 33K or 33,000 ohm. 32.253 totally acceptable because uh, these have a so the fourth band is silver so that indicates that it's a 10% tolerance resistor so what that means for the uh, uninitiated in resistor color codes if it's a 10% resistor that means it whatever the value is so the orange orange first two are digits the third is the multiplier the fourth band is a tolerance so it's three three and then uh, three basically add three zeros so 33,000 so it would be plus or minus 10 percent and 10 percent of 33,000 would be 3,300 ohms so it can be 3,300 ohms higher or lower than the value so that one perfectly within spec and it's a good looking resistor let's get one of these really nice shiny ones so this is red violet orange so that's a 27k or 27,000 ohm resistor hmm 31.988. Uh, I'd have to do the math on that, but 27 plus 27.89. Now, yeah, that pretty much falls out of tolerance. So, yeah, there's a perfect example. Nice, shiny, looks like brand new resistor. Yeah, no good. Here's a brown, kind of hard to tell, but that actually is a black band. <laughs> this one is kind of baked. But uh, brown, black, yellow, so this is a 100K resistor. So the allowable tolerance on that would be plus or minus 10,000 ohms. So this 100K resistor tests at 140.2 
point eight yeah, so 140, 832. So yeah, it's thirty thousand eight hundred and thirty-eight ohms out of tolerance. There's another thirty-three K, thirty-three thousand. 32.439, almost exactly the same as the last one, I think, so perfectly in tolerance. There's another baked one. This is red, red, orange, so this one would be 22K or 22,000. Eh, it's a little bit high, but it is within spec, 23.9. It's getting close. Now, let's see, where's some of those other... There's another good-looking one in here. Yeah, there it is. There's another one. Looks looks like new. This, is a, this was a pair of them that were in the radio. So this is another 27,000 ohm. Yeah, 32,960 ohms. Yep, another one way high. Uh, no, actually, I tested that one in circuit, so I knew that was actually good. What do we got here? Here's a yellow, violet, orange. So this is a 47K or 47,000 ohm. Yep, way out of tolerance. 56,562. And, again, if you look at that, nice, shiny, doesn't look <laughs> cooked. We'll get some more of these cooked ones here. Here's a 22K. Definitely no ifs, ands, or buts. That one looks baked. You can tell by all the bubbly glyptal, so it's definitely seen some heat. And let's see what it is. 25.6, so 22,000 plus 2.2, .2, so yeah, it's, it is out of tolerance. Here's, uh, I don't know if we've done any of the small ones. Let's do a couple of these. What do we got here? This one is a, i get that up to my face to see it. It's a damn faded, okay, that's a brown, red, orange. Ah, come on now. A little clip on there. So, brown, red, orange, that would be a 12K. Aha, look at that. That's probably the closest one we've had yet, 12.061. So 12,062.12 ohms. There's another one. Yep, same thing. Brown, red, orange. Another 12K. 11.919.3. Yep, that one's good. There's a yellow, violet, orange. So that's another 47K. It's a 1 watt resistor. And let's see, 47, 8, 9, 10, 11, yeah, just, just squeaks by. <laughs> Getting close. Get some other little small ones here. Another 47K. Yeah, 47,478, so that one's definitely intolerance. Another 100K. Lots of 100Ks in these radios. There's only a couple values. Yep, so that one's out of tolerance. That one's 112. This is, maximum would be 110,000. So, yep, another one out of spec. Yellow, violet, orange. Another 47K. 49. Eh, it squeaks by. What do we got here? Brown, black, orange. There's a 10K, so it should be a maximum 11. Eh, just out of tolerance. Not by a lot, but it's out by 199 ohms. So, yeah, like I say, looks can be deceiving. This one is a 27K, and it measures a 29, so, yeah, it would be in spec. So, yeah, good examples. Like I say, some of the ones that look like they're baked and long past their due intolerance, some of them that look like they just came out of the package are bad. This is a 27K. So that one, let's see, 27, 8, 9, yeah, nah, it's out. So, like I say, I just wanted to show that uh, looks can be deceiving. So when you look in your tram, and it doesn't have to be a tram. And it doesn't even need to be a CB or a ham radio. It can be an old AM shortwave radio. Anything old and electronic that has old carbon composition resistors that uh, just because they look good, and even if the radio has sat on the shelf completely unused, you may have a radio built back in 1920 that has been sitting in a conditioned you know, environment its entire life, and it's still in the sealed box, and 
you could pull all the resistors out of it and don't be surprised to find that every single one of them is out of tolerance. They age. That's one of the advantages of the newer film type resistors. They're a lot more resistant to aging and changing values over time. So, uh, for a second time, I just wanted to show that, yep, good resistors gone bad.